So this is my secret plugin. Honestly, this one has been held close to my chest for the longest while. But whenever I'm in a sticky situation and I'm struggling to get clarity out of a snare drum or to get more transient out of a kick drum, or if I'm struggling to get a synth to just cut through or overall just add more interest, this is the absolute best plugin I have to add that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna deactivate all instances of texture and I'm gonna play you this beat and then I'm gonna add everything back in and just have a listen to the difference that this is actually gonna make. So can you hear that clap? Pay attention, listen to that clap in particular. So what am I doing? How am I getting that clarity? Essentially, the great thing with texture is it's a gate combined with a sampler. So you can use the gate to essentially trigger things, but you can also drag in your own samples. So if you want that particular sound when the gate opens to trigger a sample, you can set it to any sample you want. You simply can just drag the audio and drag it in here and it will add that layer. But the great thing about this is it actually has a ton of great samples built in. So in this case, I I'm just using this hi-hat layer and I'm layering it on top of that clap just to give it more clarity. So if we play that one more time. And I'll solo what the Devious Machine's texture is adding. Now the crazy thing is, is in isolation, there's a difference, but there's not a drastic difference. But when you actually have a listen to this within the context of the rest of the beat and you bypass it, that's when you really realize that these little details like adding in these textures on top of drums is what's making things cut through. So check this out, I'm gonna bypass it. <laughs> It's insane, like the way it just adds that body. So how does this work? Well, let me just save this and I'm gonna just refresh this and just make this start from scratch as if we've got nothing in it. So firstly, the way it works is there's a gate and depending on where you set the gate is where it will trigger the sound. For example, if it's here, it's not triggering anything. So when it's there, it's not triggering anything because you have to set the gate level to detect the transients. So anything that's above this purple line will trigger it to initiate the sound. And then the thing that's incredible as well is you then have an EQ for the texture sound and a separate EQ for the original sound. So if I wanna EQ the original clap to give it a bit more body, I can do that within this plugin as well. But then if I decide that the high end in that texture I'm adding in that hi-hat or that digital white noise is too much, I can EQ that down as well. And then I also have individual control over the level of that 
sound as well with the gain knob. Now, it doesn't even just stop there. With the dynamics module, you can actually affect the attack, hold, decay, and the gate as well. So for example, if I want the sound to come in straight away, I can do it like this. But if I want the sound to kind of fade in, I can set the attack to slow, just like a synth, and do it like this. If I want the sound to ring a bit longer every time it's triggering, I could do it like this. And then the decay would be like the release of the sound afterwards as well, so I can do it like this. So you could just imagine the sound design possibilities. For example, on this kick drum, it just wasn't really cutting through enough. And oftentimes with kick drums, you end up layering them. So you have your kick that's your full body, but then on top of that, you'll have another kick, which is high pass, which is just adding texture. And in this case, I was able to import a sample of my own, and then I set it to trigger mode so that every time the gate was opened, it would trigger it. Or you could set it to loop. Loop would be crazy. So if you had like a drum feel or a drum loop pattern, you could set the gate to open up that pattern, for example. And then you also have granular, which is insane, like granular synthesis as well. But we're going to keep it simple for today. And we're just going to focus on this texture I was able to add. So this is the original kick drum. And then this is the texture I added on top. And initially that texture sounded like this. But of course there's way too much low end. So I was able to go here. You can select a low pass, a low pass 24, high pass, whatever kind of EQ curve you want. So I set the high pass filter and then I essentially just took out all of the low end and then I boosted the high end and then I gained it up. And then with the original kick, I didn't do any EQ to that. But this is what the two of them sound like together now. and by itself. So you're thinking, right, that kick is super saturated, but honestly, with saturation, you don't ever do it in isolation. You always do it in a context with the mix because all of those harmonics end up making that kick punch through. So let's have a listen to how this texture added on top of this kick sounds in the context of the full mix. <laughs> how it's just adding that punch on top but at the same time it also sounds like this additional percussion which is taking place so I absolutely love it for that as well but then also you can use it on synths in a really great way so with this particular synth for me it just isn't cutting through enough so I'll actually add texture and I'll add a little bit of white noise two synths because when you're actually sound designing synths anyway you'll find that you can actually add noise and that is a huge part of the texture of why synth sounds how it sounds but in this case if there isn't the option to do that i love to take things like strings or pianos even or anything and just add this texture on top so have a listen to how this sound sounds how this sound sounds have a listen to how it sounds without it Now I'm going to add it in. Can you hear how it's just adding that enhancement on the top end? Kind of the same effect you might get from adding like an ozone exciter on the top band. Oftentimes, instead of doing that, I'll just add a little bit of white noise behind the instruments. But have a listen to how this sounds in context. So first, without texture. <laughs> Now I'm going to bring texture in. Like it's 
such a small detail, but you can just hear how it's bringing out the high end. And when this sound really opens up on this side, then you really can notice the difference it's making. So have a listen without it. Now with it. But it's insane because it's not even just adding this texture. It's now giving me this rhythm because it's like a boom, doom, 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 doom. So then now like the groove feels a little bit different because if I now solo the drums with that as well, have a listen to this. And the reason why that's happening is because the white noise is here in the reverb tail and it's adding a bit of a white noise sample to that, which is just insane sound design. Like I love the possibilities with this, but same groove without texture. Add it in. It's just super interesting. Let's hear it in the context of the mix now. So let's hear it with texture and then I'll take it out. Do you not hear like that sound just completely disappeared? Listen to it one more time, so I'll keep it out and then I'll add it in this time. Oh my gosh, but honestly, this texture plugin I absolutely love it. And, and the most incredible thing is you're not going to use this plugin how I use it. You're going to find your own creative way to use it. But check it out. Devious Machines Texture. This isn't a sponsored video. This is just a plugin that I absolutely love. I use it in every single production and I just wanted to share it with you today. My name is Alex Elia. If you like this kind of content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you all next time.